All right, this is the October 11th movie review for Monster Movie Every Day for October 2022. This is The Invisible Woman from 1940. So if you look at the poster, boop, it is uh, pretty much looks like a comedy. Like there's, she's like kicking someone in the butt up there. It just looks really pretty silly. And this movie has this disc. This is the Blu-ray from the 30 movie set, and it has the two movies on it again. So you have to, you got to pick which one you want to watch. Like that. Okay, so when I saw the poster and I was like, is this a comedy? The answer is yeah, it is. It has like a joke a minute, really, or a joke every single scene. There's a joke in the movie. So it is, I don't know what it's doing in the horror movie set, but that's, that's what it is. Okay, so the, okay, so the music at the beginning is like this, like super swoony, like happy music. And it's just like, whoa. This is really different than all the other movies. Okay, so if if we weren't sure by the music and also the poster of what kind of movie this is, like look at this opening scene here. Like the butler totally just crashes and it could be serious, but then he just like gets up and like dusts himself off and quits his job for like the 50th time. Okay, and actually one of my favorite quotes is coming up right here. He says uh, this... this guy says to him he says listen to me you extravagant girl crazy idiot <laughs> i just he's talking to the richard the main richard guy i just thought that's a good that's one of my favorite quotes it might be my favorite quote in the whole movie okay so the plot of this movie is really simple um first of all it is not connected at all to the other invisible man movies like at all like not a single character it is not related at all um so You basically have a scientist who's trying to turn people invisible. He puts an ad in the classifieds to see if someone will come volunteer to be turned invisible. And then you have this Richard guy who basically employs the scientist guy who inherited him from his dad or something. And then the a lady responds to the ad because she decides that she could do some awesome stuff when she's invisible, like get back at her really mean boss. Okay, so like I said, this is the Blu-ray of the movie. And um, this shot here just highlights how much detail's in here. It actually looks really good. I, I didn't think it looked bad at all. Um, there's a couple like really ultra soft shots in the movie. Like when it shows the main Richard guy and the main kitty lady. Like it's just like super soft around their faces. Also the little housekeeping assistant of the professor. 99% sure it's the witch from Wizard of Oz. So look at her. See if you can tell. Yeah, and if you could hear her voice, you could tell too, but it's like totally got to be her. It sounds like her and everything it was like really alarming. Got to see her from the side. She's got a very distinct profile. Anyway, yeah, there she is. So I'm pretty sure that's the witch from Wizard of Oz. Um, oh, yeah. So when I heard, so that's Professor Gibbs. And I was like, oh, okay, so maybe the other movie has a Professor Gibbs. Nope, none of the other movies. Well, none of the previous ones do. Um, so my three-year-old daughter... Uh, saw me watching this and decided to watch with me. And what did you think? What did you think of the movie, Serena? It was what? What? What happened to the woman? It crashed in glass. She crashes the glass of her boss's door mm -hmm. to get back at him. Um, what happened to her though? She 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 got invisible. She got invisible. Yeah, was it scary? No. No, it wasn't. It What'd was, you say? It was funny. It was funny, yeah. yeah. There's a joke a minute in this movie. It is very family friendly and pretty pretty silly as far as this this thing goes. Like it, it really the baby crying. But uh yeah, no, this thing was the total rom com. It was not a scary movie. Okay. So uh this part that's behind me right now is uh one of the scientist's inventions that was actually like almost as crazy as his invisible invention. This is pretty much a self-driving car. Like he tells it to go park itself and it just drives off. And then, and then the guy's like, oh, it parked itself. It's just like, wow, that's, that's like super sci-fi. This movie's like 1940.
Okay, so this lady, oh, there it is. There's the soft lighting, the, the main character soft lighting right there, right? So this is the main character lady. She's the one that wants to go invisible to get back at her mean boss. And she says the thing she wants to do when she goes invisible is to kick him in the pants. I was like, man, that poster was really accurate. It shows her kicking a dude in the pants. Okay, and just like the other uh, monster movies, if they involve any science, it's starting to get really sciencey in here. Because they got light, flashing lights and knobs and all kinds of stuff that they're twisting and turning. So, uh, you know that science is happening here. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's not connected at all to the other movies. And now by the time she gets she gets uh, invisible... Oh, look at that. Look at all that science happening. Look at that. So much science. Um, but yeah, by the time she gets invisible, she just takes off right out the door to go like harass her workplace. And it's pretty much workplace violence at that point. Uh, and then here's another quote that I really like. This is from the uh, the professor to the housekeeper. He says, he says, get away. Don't interrupt me. You bore me. It's just like, oh, my gosh. It's like really intense to say to your little housekeeper lady. Um, as far as the Blu-ray goes, um, I, think, I think I may have already said the picture looks fine. The sound is good. Um, there were some super blurry shots kind of at, at a distance, and then also there was the intentionally blurry shots around Daddy, the faces of Daddy, Richard and Kitty. Daddy, but yeah, do you see the Kitty? Um, but Daddy, other than that, it looked okay. It was fine. Yeah, it's your Kitty. Um, so it's a totally decent looking, looking Blu-ray. The grain was decent. There's a few globby parts, but it really it looked okay. There's like a little tiny bit of print damage, but overall it's pretty it's pretty clean and watchable. So I always. I always appreciate that, especially on such an old movie. Uh, okay. Uh, oh yeah, so here's some here's some bad guys, basically bad guys. trying to uh, they want to steal the stuff, but like th this is just how competent they are. And it already showed them tripping over each other in another scene, but watch when they open the door to get the other guy out. I mean, like seriously, these are the bad guys, and they're that level of competence the entire time. Okay, so it gets a little nuts when she goes to her old workplace. She uh, she really she really goes to town on this place. She's like kicking him in the butt. It's like really weird out of context. This scene here. Um, but yeah, like I was saying about the villains, how they're just like falling over themselves to get stuff done, and like the good guys, like there's just a joke a minute even in serious situations. So I really think. So other than me being like, wow, every character in this movie is an idiot, I think it's just, it's a total comedy. It, it is a comedy movie. I just don't expect, I guess there's the Abbott and Costello, Abbott and Costello movies in, in this 30 movie set. Um, but I really, I really wasn't expecting any comedies in this. I mean, other than those, but this one, this is a full on comedy. Oh, here's another quote from the professor. He says, he says, he says, if more women were invisible, life would be much less complicated. <laughs> oh my gosh, this guy says some crazy stuff. So kind of the whole time I was watching this, I was just like, who is the audience for this movie? Like, is this like for little kids or for grownups? Like, I, I was actually having a hard time, like, identifying who this movie is trying to target. All right, so essentially this plot is guy makes someone invisible, girl goes, does, does stuff to her boss. This other guy's a total woman I like player kind of guy and then uh he can't see this lady so he's super intrigued by her and he keeps accusing her of being uh not attractive because she's invisible and then you have some villains trying to steal the stuff and like that's kind of what's happening so this guy who's been like a womanizer forever is now getting to know a woman without seeing her first and he's having more and more of a relationship built with her and then in this scene in particular he Decides to feel her hands. You can see him stroking her hand and how soft it is. And he says one of my favorite quotes, which is uh, kind of crazy right there. He says, he says, it's very nice hand. And then he's like, it's nice to the taste. It's just like, oh my gosh, this guy's really intense. Anyway, so he is learning to like a girl before seeing her, which is like the opposite of his character so far. Like he had like... 20 portraits of ladies on top of his piano at his house. 
Oh, and then Kitty gets really tired of being invisible, and she's like, I've got to be visible. And Richard's like, think of my suspense. Like, he's like, really wants to see what she looks like. It's silly. Here's some cool special effects again. I love this invisible person special effects here. So you've got the, uh, yeah, there she is without her head. So, yeah, love it. So you basically get into this subplot of she wants to become visible, but now there's all this pressure because Richard keeps wanting to see her. And so then the professor gets her address. So then they pretty much create this like grand entrance for her to come down the stairs for when she comes invisible. Um, yeah, also you just have total incompetence from everyone on every side. Butler gets his own gun taken. Butler also shot the ceiling when he was trying to pose and be like, look at me, I have a gun and I'm going to protect you. Like he just shot the ceiling, like total negligent discharge. It's like, man, the people in these movies should not carry guns. Like it's actually kind of freaky. Uh, but yeah, so, so there's like the subplot of creating this grand entrance for her to meet Richard for the first time. And so, uh, but of course there's bad guys behind the curtain. And so anyway, it's just like a rom-com, like kind of a crime movie, but here she is walking down the stairs and there's Richard being totally blown away. Uh, oh, when, when these guys try to kidnap her, they're like, they're like, come on, lady, be a gentleman about this. And they're like trying to kidnap her. <laughs> pretty silly, pretty silly quote right there. Uh, let's see, I already said everyone in this movie is an idiot, but I think that's the point. It's kind of just comedy. Um, she, when she drinks alcohol, she goes invisible. So that's kind of interesting. Um, Okay favorite part of the whole movie is they're like surrounded by bad guys and she goes invisible again by of course drinking alcohol again but she here i'll just i'll pause and get that so she totally goes on a rampage and like spoiler alert she like takes out all the bad guys like i was really really happy with this body count i know it's not like a death count because she's like knocking them all out and stuff but like and then this is a silly cartoon shock here, here. But uh, then she gets a freaking mallet and she just goes out and she's just taking dudes out. Like one after the other. And it's awesome. Like I was like, yes, this is so cool. So uh, yeah, she just, I mean, it's like six or seven guys, maybe more. <laughs> Pretty funny. Oh yeah. Then Richard shows up to save her and he's like, she's like, oh, well, I already took everyone out, but he should have to fight for me. So then she, oh, she does this thing, which is kind of hard for me to deal with. So here it is. She decides that he has to fight for her. So she wants to like make it hard and make him struggle. She gets the machine gun and shoots it at him. Right at their feet. That is awful. Anyway, man, people in the gun safety in these movies really stresses me out. Anyway, so my three-year-old really liked this movie. She, I think she just enjoyed it. The movie is a total family-friendly, safe comedy. Um, there's a there's a baby at one point that disappears, and then this one that I'm holding. It's going to show her face. Oh, she's tired. Um, this is our almost two-year-old. She was like, baby, baby, where'd the baby go? So she, I don't think she liked that the baby disappeared. But uh, my three-year-old was just like, yeah, let's watch it again. I was like, okay, cool. So I just let her watch it while I was taking some notes. Um, it's pretty much a screwball comedy, very, very odd entry. It was enjoyable, but the whole time I was like, well, not really the whole time because the poster and the music at the beginning is just like, this movie is going to be lighthearted and pretty silly. So, um, I would say it's on the lower end of the movies. I, um, it's just hard to judge it when the other movies are supposed to be like horror movies. And this is just like a silly family comedy. So automatically it kind of ends up on the lower end um of the movies so far um yeah there's no connection the other movies I already said that i think that was the third time i said that uh, my expectations were a little i think that made it harder to watch um and then oh so i'm one third of the way there now with these movies so this movie is due what did i say this is coming out october 11th so the next movie is wolfman on 4k and that's coming out October 12th. So uh, let me know what you think. And if you like this kind of thing. And if you're watching these. And yeah. Say something to me down below. So thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Mario. Hey. Here you go.